Hey, good morning everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. God bless you today. I hope you have a great day today, whether you're going to school, whether you're going to work. Have a great day. Stay positive because positive thoughts does bring positive results. So as of the 4 a.m. update, Ada is a 30 miles per hour tropical depression and it is predicted to get even more weaker. Now, uh, NOAA still has it as a tropical storm on the same path going over Cuba and curving left right before Florida, but it is not showing a depression for a long period anymore. It's showing it, it predicted to be a tropical storm as early as Friday. And if you do like the content that I provide, please subscribe, hit that like button. Gotta do this every single day, guys. Now, as far as EPS cyclones, for anything being a possible tropical storm, they are showing within 72 hours. This is the most likely projected area that a tropical storm will occur. And in 96 hours, they expect it to be in this area more than likely with a little bit more of strengthening going on. And then five days from now, this is where you have, this is pretty much where the models don't know what happens after this after five days because it just gets whirly and circly and just a little crazy but there is strengthening going on here now just to show you on an average at 144 hours it looks like it is trying to push west it depends if it can beat the, the wind shear and the dry air and then it shrinks down and then it gets pushed to nothing back so we'll see exactly what happens. I mean, that's exactly what we have right now. So we don't know what is going to be the exact path yet. But for five days, it is showing a tropical storm will be uh, in between Cuba and Florida. So be careful of that. Now, this is your Enzo. Uh, your low pressure is where they can all be as far as your members. And it is showing it is in 72 hours from now that they actually going to have a tropical storm already by the Cayman Islands and Cuba. And as we go forward, it starts breaking up. See, all the members agree, whether it's sooner or later, that it will go towards uh, South Florida, right across Cuba, somewhere in that direction, before it finally breaks up and goes on its different paths. And this is a part we don't know yet. Mostly because it's still doing land interaction, and as soon as it gets done with the land interaction, uh, we can get a good good track and intensity. Now, a lot, of my, a lot of the ensembles show that it does go back out to the Gulf, it does do some strengthening on some, but when the dry air moves in, it moves most of them back towards Florida again, eastern Gulf. Uh, one stays behind, but if you notice, this one right here that, that goes a little slower back, it starts intensifying pretty nicely. It gets down to 959 millibars for a possibility. For, it looks like it's going towards Tampa. So be careful on that. I don't know if that's going to how true that that forecast will be. We will find out soon enough. Now this is your 31 members of what could possibly happen. Uh, we do show that there is a possibility for a fast track uh, storm being by the Cayman Islands in literally 42 to 48 hours. Uh, the rest of them show it's a little bit later, but they all go the same path. They all go towards Cuba. They all go to turn towards Florida, whether it's late turn or a uh, early turn but if you sit and watch this one right here you'll see that it does do some intensification and goes on the eastern side of i'm sorry the western side of florida and also this one over here this one shows that where the h monitor h wharf and all of them are predicting that it is going to go wide out and it's showing that it will get intensification as it goes past uh, Bahamas and heads towards the Atlantic Ocean, towards the, up the East Coast. So that is a possibility. We just need to keep our eyes on it. And a lot of them, you could tan, you need to pay attention. A lot of them do show that there is a lot of swirling that goes around by the Yucatan before uh, it actually does take off towards Cuba. And we also do show that there is a possibility still for some making it close to Louisiana. It's still kind of far away for those models. But it is a possibility, and we need to keep every possibility on track because it's not going to be our last storm from what I'm showing for this season so far. And we have another one here at E26 showing there's still a possibility for it to be a landfall on, well, not landfall, but come close to Louisiana. Now, this is your deep layer wind shear. This is our storm here. This is 36 hours away. And this is the main reason why it has issues making it into the Gulf immediately. It's because the wind shear is going to drive it off. Plus, it's getting dry air through the backside of it as it's going through 
this wind shear problem. Now, when it gets across Cuba, that's when we don't know exactly where it's going yet because at this point, it's literally 90 to 96 hours away, and that's when the wind shear will let go a little bit and it does that high upper ridge and it gets away from the storm and the storm is able to pull away. So, as of right now, it's showing 108 hours away that it's 988 right in front of Florida by the Bahamas, and then five days from now, it's showing the exact spot as it was shown in the other models. It's still, we don't know what's going on past five days, five days, excuse me. So don't let people uh, tell you that they know what's going on because even Noah don't know uh, what's going on with this past five days. We just all have to wait and see. And that's the, the track that we have as far as the deep layer wind shear and what could happen with the GFS. Now, if y'all remember the, the Moab, I told you all about it, it's a tropical cyclone prediction center. And they are still predicting that there's still going to be intensification. They're still showing intensification. They're showing it to be a Cat 1 before it gets to the Cayman Islands and that it'll actually be a Cat 2 hurricane coming before Cuba. So we got to keep everybody's track in mind because nobody, like I said, even Noah don't know what's going to happen. So we got to pretty much wait and see, which is, which is bad enough. Now here's the ensemble according to Moab, according to where he thinks that all these uh, models – show what the uh, impact could be and a lot of them show that it does curve wide outside towards bahamas and heads up east east coast of florida and a lot of them show some early curvature but if you see one two three four members show that it will go wide right so we got to keep that in mind of maybe that could happen now if you look at the intensity models you do see that some of them are starting to pick up like the nvgi is starting to pick up that it's going to be some intensification going on as well as, as the ship is showing that there's going to be intensification. And you can see the curvature at these as it goes on. So there is going to be at some point uh, intensification, and all these are showing that it will be at least a Cat 1 hurricane. There's just a few models that are showing that it's just going to be very small and nothing. And to be honest with you, those models don't show much anytime anyway. Now, if you look at it, uh, the surface low pressures and see exactly what goes on, we'll go through the model so you can see what we have so far. Now, according to the GFS, it shows it will be a tropical storm going towards Cuba. It will go wide, but it will turn before Bahamas and head towards the Gulf. And this is where it gets a little tricky. GFS does a little dancing around, but it looks like the wind shear and the dry air could kill it if it gets a chance. But... It don't. It goes around it. It gets to 964, and this is what it showed two days ago. Then it went to 970, and it went back to 964 again. So it is possible that this is going to be close to getting it to the places in the Gulf uh, states, but still not showing any land or interaction, guys. I think Texas is okay. I think Louisiana is still okay. Mississippi okay. Anywhere else is still kind of questionable. We gotta wait and see what happens with this with this high pressure in the Atlantic Ocean. It's blocking it, and this is a Korean KMA, but the the high pressure is blocking it from going any further out into the Atlantic. That's why it all curves to the west, and then this one gets killed by the dry air and the wind shear, which is a good thing. Now the nav gem, the nav gem shows different information. The nav gem shows that it goes up through Bahamas as a hurricane 980. And then it goes to the east coast of Florida. It gets even stronger as it goes all the way up the east coast. And this is 971, 969, 967, and then it, it weakens. So there must be some land interaction or it's going to be wind shear. So if we look at the east coast and see what exactly what happens, you'll see that as it passes Bahamas, it goes to east, east of Florida. And then it does get blocked by the high pressure up here. And usually you would think that it would cut left. But it looks like it just winds down. But then again, the high pressure moves, and so is the, the, the low pressure is available to move forward up north. So that's a possibility as well. Now the Euro shows something different. The Euro shows that it will be a tropical storm going towards Cayman Islands and Cuba. And good thing for you, Jamaica, is it's showing that you're not getting any effects from any of these models so far. So that's, that's a very good thing for you. You've been through enough, I'm sure, already. Now, the Euro shows a little wookie. It goes round and round about, and a couple of other models did show this as well. And then it changes its mind and goes back into the Gulf where it dies off. So I like the idea of these systems dying off in the Gulf, getting choked. That is really nice. Now, the GFS 
Uh, version 16 parallel shows that it will be by Cuba within 54 to 60 hours as a strong tropical storm. It will weaken over Cuba, go through uh, Jamaica, and then, then curve back in through southern Florida. Now, when it leaves southern Florida and goes into the Gulf is when it starts strengthening to a hurricane, and then it comes back right by Tampa. And then it goes up and dies off. Now, if you look here, this one this one is your H-Wharf. This is on Tropical Tidbits. You can see the H-Wharf brings it to the east coast of Florida as a 985. The H-Wharf parent shows the same thing a little further up Florida, but it also shows a 985. And the h mon shows that it's a little sooner, so it curves sooner, and it will be more like towards Miami, hitting towards a 992. So that's what we have so far as far as this morning goes. We just need to wait and see exactly what happens with this high pressure, how long it's going to hang out. Then it has other factors as far as the, the uh, dry air and the wind shear. So we have all these factors we got to throw into it and see exactly what's going to happen. And we don't have much longer to figure this out because 24 to 36 hours away, it's going to be on its way. So God bless you all today. I hope we find out that this storm don't affect anybody else. I hope it just goes straight towards the Gulf and just dies off. That would be a great factor for me. <laughs> and then we can get on with the rest of our winter season. So God bless you. I do appreciate y'all for checking out the channel, checking out the video. If you did like it, please hit the like button for me. Share it to others if you know that they need some information updates. And also what I do is every day is I like to bless my brothers and sisters. That's something that's never going to go away. It's, it's always going to be more important than any storm or any problem that is going on in anybody's life. Because the best thing we can do is get right with God. Amen. Now I'm going to read to y'all Psalm 95. Give y'all a little blessing. We need to praise our God because our God is great. Amen. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands form the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me and saw my work. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that do err to their heart and they have not known my ways. Unto whom? I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Amen. God bless you all today. Y'all have a great day today. Go out and try and help somebody today because the only thing that matters is your relationship with God. Amen. All glory does go to God. Y'all have a great day. I'll see y'all later this afternoon.